Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, good morning. Good morning. Really informal today, and it's really about it's really about you as as tutors and the challenges you face when you go out and actually deliver. Um, obviously, the goal to be within the course. Uh, so all we're going to do, we'll probably spend um, about half an hour here, just go through a few slides. Um, some of them are information, um, just in case you get asked questions. <coughs> Uh, feel free at any time, but if something's not clear or needs clarifying, then uh, please ask the question. Um, so all we do is we look at the current pathway as it stands at the moment. Um, we look at the pathway moving forward in terms of the goalkeeping, the, the goalkeeping strand, because uh, we are actually changing the structure <coughs> of the goalkeeping strand. Um, we look at some uh, a potential CPD program. Uh, for uh, goalkeeping workshops on a, on a national basis and also on a regional basis. I'll uh, give you an indication of where we are in terms of timelines uh, with Jay Roper. Uh, there's a little bit of information about goalkeeping B license, UA for goalkeeping A license, which will help you when you're giving feedback, action planning, because people might pose a question. I'm a goalkeeping coach, so where is my pathway? And the last little bit. It's just for clarification, just for the application criteria. Politically, this has proved to be really difficult, so we have to be really clear and transparent to make sure that the 16 places on the course at this level, that we get the right people on the course. So, um, so that's the structure, as I say, six, six slides. Okay, um, so we've got the pathway there as it currently stands. Um, if you look at the, if we work from the left hand side, uh, what we have is uh, Development Centres Colleges, WSL, obviously working, working right to send the academy 5 to 11, 12 to 16 within the triple P. Uh, the person who's actually leading the goalkeeping programme from 21s down <coughs> until on the far right side where it's the senior professional goalkeeping coach. Um, two pathways into the program, starting on the left, but, so if you if you actually work within um, development centres, uh, colleges, or the WSL, um, coaches can get on the FA Goalkeeping B licence through the Youth Award. Okay, they, they do need to have their Goalkeeping Level 2, uh, but there is an avenue for the coach that doesn't need, doesn't need, as in mandatory qualification, doesn't need UA for B, that has the youth award, they can still access the goalkeeping B license. Uh, the Pro Academy, um, you do need your UA for B, it's an EPPP, okay, so you do need your UA for B uh, and also the FA goalkeeping B license. For the person who's fronting uh, the academy, uh, there is the advanced youth award, uh, goalkeeping element of it. Where they come in with all, obviously all the other coaches on the advanced youth award. Sometimes they're together, sometimes they separated. Yeah. Tend to be more separated on the physical corner and on the site corner. Together on the social, and obviously the four blocks, either end. And then the final, uh, to the far right, for the goalkeeping coaches that are working with senior pros, we now have the way to go to the main license. Okay, so that's a, just a base structure. I'll give you a copy of this because I think this will be handy for you to have when you're sort of doing feedback just in case of somebody <coughs> saying well I'm here at the minute but this is where they want to get to. This then is a, quite a simple graphic. This is so if you look at the, um, just the title at the top, February 2018, the, the plan is the new goalkeeping level one and goalkeeping level two uh, will be introduced in Feb 2018. Um, the, the, the thought behind it was to have the winter window of 2017. So to have sort of November, December, January, uh, to mop up the old course, get all the certification, all the recording and everything done, and also that three month window, 
uh, do the in-service training program for these two new courses. Uh, pretty much the same as is uh, what is at the moment, which is uh, at the bottom there you've got emergency aid, you've got safeguarding. The LTGD is the long-term goalkeeping development. Uh, and this is basically a, a module uh, which currently is in the goalkeeping level one, but will be taken out to the, the new goalkeeping level one and be done as a pre-course task. Uh, learner profile, I'm not sure where we are at the moment with that, I think there was a problem with the LMS, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Very topical. Uh, uh, I chore. think the, the plan was, was to put something online where the learner could actually go in and put background information on where they see themselves <coughs> going, their experiences, but for some reason uh, that might not be the case where they're going. I don't know, it's, uh, there's uh, been an issue with it apparently. Um, so the pathway will be goalkeeping level one, open entry. If they want to go to goalkeeping level two, they will need to go the left hand side of the slide. So they will need to do the new level one course, need to do the new level two course, and then go across to goalkeeping level two. <coughs> um, the plan is to run uh, the goalkeeping modules, which you can see the series of them there, three hours by however many, uh, run them as regional courses, obviously within the county FAs, um, or area sort of courses, or national courses. Uh, what do those goalkeeping modules look like? Uh, a mix really, and I'll come on to a slide which just gives you a taster um, of what they could look like. They will be staffed by the current cohort of goalkeeping level one, goalkeeping level two tutors. Um, <coughs> But uh, although they are sort of goalkeeping workshops, the FA Level 1 coach or Level 2 coach, as part of their CPD program, they actually might <coughs> like to drop in on some of the modules. You just <coughs> so that just gives you a little bit of a taste there. Uh, this isn't prescriptive in terms of these are the ones we're definitely doing. I'd be interested in your thoughts. If you thought there was, uh, there was some others we could include, uh, if you just have a read through them yourself, <coughs> I'll just spend a, just a minute, just having a scan. <coughs> There's certainly topics on there I think that would be of interest to an outfield coach. space, so defending the goal and then defending the space, space between, yeah. <coughs> okay, Anne. So this is the timeline at the moment. Um, so it was, it was November 2016 there. Um, I'm meeting with Jay Roper every month, um, going through a a logical timeline just to make sure that everything is in place for the launch in February 2018. Uh, plan to contact all the counties uh, in the new year and ask them to finish all the goalkeeping courses by October the 31st. Yeah, so we then have that winter window of November, December and January to put everything in place to uh, box off the old course and introduce the new one. <coughs> New journals, e-learning modules, and obviously, as I talked about, period for tutoring in service. And then February the 1st would be the launch of the, the new courses. So, uh, just with regard to goalkeeper B licence, so this will help with the action plan and feedback. <coughs> Might have coaches that complete, obviously, the, the level 2 course, um, uh, goalkeeping uh, obviously have an interest in goalkeeping and, and want to progress uh, down the goalkeeping pathway. We've got two courses, 
both being run from here, uh, 15th to the 20th of May, 26th to the 31st, uh, 28th on each course, so the opportunity obviously 56, 56 coaches. What we'll then do is in May 2018, when we do the next goalkeeping bee license, we'll actually uh, amend the current course so it looks similar to the obviously the, the UA for B license and the, the FA level three, which I think <coughs> is uh, due to be launched. Is it August? August 17, I think. Yeah, yeah. August 17. Yeah. So uh, that'll give us another more of a suit to May, just to make sure that the goalkeeping course reflects what's happening within the uh, just a little bit of background info really, the UA for Goalkeeping A license. Um, second course is currently running. Uh, we started it in September, did a two day block in September, two days in December. We'll do another two in February, another two in April. Um, we'll have assignments to complete, micro groups, and hopefully be ready for final assessment uh, around about August 2017. We're just waiting for ratification of the course. So at the moment, it's uh, yeah, it's advertised as a way for goalkeeping a license. Um, Packy Bonner, who you're all aware of in terms of his playing career, uh, he's now one of the uh, influential men really within UEFA in terms of goalkeeping. And he was presenting to the Jira panel on the 25th of November. And we're just awaiting ratification. As soon as we do. Uh, they'll give us a template, and I can then get all the certificates and everything drawn up. Uh, currently, there's about 30 odd have already gone through the course, so it's well up to speed. Thanks, Alan. Can I just ask a question? Sorry, Keith, yeah. Well, what's the realistically the highest the grassroots coach can get to? Uh, realistically. <coughs> Probably going to be license. Right. That wasn't going to go to the license. So that's, if I'm asking that, that's what I can say to him, given with the B band. Yeah. It's really the hardest to get to. Yeah, it'd be a challenge for them, because a lot of it is based around the EEE program. You know, the academy program. So we're not working in the academy. They might be working within Long League. So, yeah, we've got coaches who have been on the course What's and working with them. From up to about step four, the best he can do is go unless he gets into the program. Yeah. It's going to be a UA. Well, if he gets into the program, yeah, a he gets award. into the program would be if it is a banshee for what goalkeeping or if they work at the senior end, then uh, they, they would actually be in the club. club. They, they would be, yeah. Uh, and that's a stipulation from UEFA. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And this is just reality, really. Um, one of the challenges we face is there's only 16 places on the course. So when you get 47 applications for it, there are obviously going to be a few people disappointed. Um, but this is actually drawn up, um, so the categories <coughs> and just a breakdown of uh, the, uh, although there's 16 on the course, we have managed um, made, after making an application to UEFA to get 20 um, and they, they said fine, no problem at all. So we've actually got 20 on this, this course and the breakdown is we've got 8 from uh, number 1. Yeah, so eight that work full time for senior goalies. We've got uh, we've got eleven from number two that actually lead, and we've we won the, the last place went to a, a goalkeeping coach who uh, leads the pro for, program from under twenty ones down. But he's also a UEFA A license coach. Yeah, and he's um, and he's UEFA A license coach. So that's the breakdown. So obviously year after year. Probably find that you know just due to the sheer numbers game, there will be people that will get on who 
work within the academy. Tom, well, why can't there be a um, percentage of places kept for grassroots coaches to come that far? Because UEFA's criteria is work full time right. senior goalkeepers. Okay. <clears throat> the last slide and was there just before I hand over to Andy was there any sort of queries but if you think of anything you know over the over the couple of hours we're together please feel free just to ask them. No, it's actually the other round of mod three I've got quite a few goalkeepers goal, goalkeeper coaches wanting to do the mod three pack based on the goalkeepers are working on I understand linking the units. Is there any practice or good practice around around that? So the mod, the, the mod three pack that they do, yeah, to do the youth award assessment. A lot so like I've got a ah, right. goalkeeper yeah. coaches, Arsenal ladies, doesn't he, he, he works with a group and then has some access to outfield players. But yeah. what I've said to him yeah. is to try and do topics which it which is record topics in his book that, that he can then evidence working with unit team and individual. Hundred percent and. And, and that's the feedback that the, uh, that the lads were in, obviously, delivering one day on that course and supporting the course, is that it should be no different. Yeah. The goalkeeper is a player, yeah. so all you're doing is, is basically working. Because in the past it's been said that they can't do, they, they can't, no, they can do the pack if they're working with goalkeepers, yeah, but they can make evidence. They can, yeah. I don't think there's any issues whatsoever. Tim, do you want to? Yeah, I, I've had that question a lot. And, um, my answer is, of course you can do it with goalkeepers, but it's, it's got to look very like an outfield session, probably. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to do it with two keepers, you're going to have to be really inventive of how you get out, uh, for example, say the three R's or anything to do with units yeah, or interactions. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all, all I said to him is to just to do session, only record sessions that where we can evidence that rather than try and force. If it because because that for that particular goalkeeper is bound by the um, <coughs> coaching program of the club, yeah. so he can only work on certain topics week by week. So he probably won't pass them, will he? If he's if he's stuck doing that, he's no, not going to be able I'm to do it. Some of them he can evidence, oh, so, <coughs> so, then, yeah. it be, so it'll take him a longer period of time because yeah. he'll only record the ten sessions. That if he has to, if he has to evidence in the in the final assessment or the practicals as well, yeah. like evidence of. Uh, practice spectrum, evidence of three R's, yeah. um, anything else along those lines, he's going to really struggle if he's got two keepers, isn't he? Yeah. It'll be a real challenge. Um, and I, I, would, I, would advise, I would advise just to stay as close to what you would do for, with an outfield coach. <coughs> they, should, they should understand that as well. change because the ECCP requirements are you need the UA for B license and the FA goalkeeping B license. The FA goalkeeping the goalkeeping B license is an FA course. It's, it's not a UA for course and it will, never will be. I know some people refer it to as a UA for course but it will never be a UA for course. Mm -hmm. um, so the ECCP requirements are that we need it but you still can access Goalkeeping B license through the youth award, yeah. Which is so anyone who's gone through the youth award can do the goalkeeping B license, <coughs> not a problem. But the tri triple P rules say you need UA for B, yeah. And because you need UA for B to work in the professional game, then so by introducing the route through the youth award, it caters it caters for everyone now, yeah. This is just the last slide, and this is really, for me, the objectives of today, as I said, wanted to be really informal, yeah, and it's, it's about you, it's your personal needs, because you're going to be the ones that are going out there to deliver it, so um, these are the crucial things for me, that when we finish at 12 or 12.30, yeah, when an underpinning knowledge of the technicalities of goalkeeping, so that you go away with actually a better understanding of goalkeeping, and therefore, when you put the courses on, yeah, the relative information uh, is all hopefully shared with the learners. Yeah, 
a better understanding of the role of the goalkeeper in the game, and understanding different roles and profiles. Like Nigel just talked there about defending the, you know, the, <coughs> the space. Um, and you can all have goalkeepers and pictures in your minds as some who are actually terrific at defending the goal, but don't defend the space. And other goalkeepers that can defend the goal and defend the space. And you've got other goalkeepers who can defend the space but don't defend the goal very well. Yeah? So what we're looking at is you having a picture in your mind of the type of goalkeepers. Yeah? So if you're going to play with a, a real high back line, you're going to need a goal where you can deal with the space. Yeah? Or if you're going to really defend deep the counter-attack, it's not as important. Yeah? What you then need is a goalkeeper who can defend the goal and then obviously be in a position to counter attack. Two, you know, looking at different profiles. And the last little bit is using goalkeeping terminology. Um, and within our, within the FA, and even within the technical department, the amount of times I'm still hearing national coach, coaches talking about goalkeepers kicking the ball. Yeah? Oh, what a great kick that was. They'd never ever say, if a fullback delivered a quality ball, they'd never say, oh, what a great kick for the fullback. Yeah? So try and get kick out of the vocabulary. Yeah? So when you're doing your courses, can you use actual goalkeeping terminology? So these are some of the some of the things that we're going to talk about um, <coughs> moving forward. And Tim's been a massive part of the of the DNA, and we met up actually last week. And this is just evolving. But these are some of the things about when does a goalkeeper support same side? So same side as the ball, yeah. When do they support opposite side, yeah? So actually away from the ball. We look at really in receiving techniques. Um, we talk about terminology of when, when um, in possession, about playing out. So when do we play out? Um, we're going to introduce playing round. So that's when the ball is circulated, maybe from the left side of the pitch to the right side of the pitch. Playing through when you're breaking lines and trying to get between players to play into midfield players. Playing into, so playing into the high fullbacks or the high wide players, or playing on to a front man. So rather than just saying playing out, because if I said, can you define playing out for me, you'd all have a different picture, yeah? But if I said to you, okay, look at each of them, what do you think playing out might be? What do you think playing through might be? What do you think playing into might be? So these are some of the terminology that we need to use. Just, just hey, so even just, when we had that meeting, um, prior to today, just you doing this made a lot more sense. When you were saying about that, that's playing out, so you're five and six. Five and six, yeah. Yeah. So that's playing out, but out. out. <laughs> Come out. <laughs> <coughs> That's playing through, yeah, into that area, so you get 8 and you 10, if that's the case. Playing into 2 and 7. <coughs> and that, that's that on to? What, what myself and Tim were talking about there? The other day is also um, introducing, so we see playing out as when uh, the opposition are in balance. Uh, so it's basically the goalkeeper maybe placing the ball, passing out to maybe a, the right centre back, and then the right centre back just playing forward. Yeah? We see playing round as when it goes from left to right or right to left, where the goalkeeper is part of that. And the, we did talk about playing over. But I think the better terminology, um, some we were discussing today, is playing beyond. You know, so looking to exploit the space in behind people, <coughs> playing over. I don't know if people might assume that's over the camera's going really long. So trying to play beyond. Is your terminology based on those numbers, or is it based on scenarios? So, for example, example. what if you play into the four? but it doesn't break the line because the opposition have dropped. Is that playing out, playing yeah. or playing through? 
from our playing through that's playing out there. Yeah. So it's, not, it's based on scenarios, scenarios and numbers. Bridge lanes. Playing, playing through is really bridge lanes. Yeah, yeah I, I get that. Um, so you're using the numbers just to give us some pictures. Yeah. yeah. But it's scenarios. So that you start you to coach. use the terminology. Of understanding with, 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 with the coach. With the, I think that's, that's a really valid point because yeah, it's really good. initially, it like now you've just gone on because of that. But the question proves that we're not that clear on it. So we it won't be long, but we we've we've just defined what all them things mean as well. We'll I can't say exactly when it'll be. I reckon in the next month we'll share all that with you, exactly what each what each point means and we we've defined it, yeah. It's, we'd be really, really clear. Where does this fit into the level one and the level one course? You tell me, Keith. So, what are we expecting a level one coach? So, all that stuff there around your team and what you're looking at, is there going to be layered um, points or technical stuff that they can know there, what they know at level two, and then? Where they're going to learn the other school, that sort of stuff in the modules. Would that be? I don't know. This, this is obviously at level, level two, because there's going to be, as I understand it, within the level one, there's no. The goalkeeper is specific, but it's for you to drip feed the information which you feel relevant into the into the level one. So there must be times within the level one. Does the word goalkeeper ever get mentioned in the level one? Yeah. I think that's the answer. He's the one that kicks it. And if goalkeeping is mentioned, it will come in within within this. It will either come in the in possession or the out of possession. So the either in, in possession as part of the team or out of possession in terms of defending the goal or defending in the space. However, that's the space, if that's the space looks. I did four games on Sunday. I did a, a game one v, dealing with a 1v1 situation with Bill Peter. I did a game where they had to switch play from the side in a 5v5. I did one which um, was around um, dealing with the ball uh, in the space behind. And it was just around talking about the guilty. Now there weren't a lot of technical detail in there, but it was just around focusing the game on the guilty. Okay. But after today, I think you, if you were to do that again, you would probably have a, a better understanding by seeing seeing the practices and then maybe just discussing the <coughs> practices amongst one another. What do you think of the guilty there? Too high. <coughs> he's a play keeper. He's to offer depth. He's come same side because he's got double pressure. Yeah, the single pressure might be the other ball. See, now you're talking some really in specifics now about a goalkeeper situation. But that's that's what you need. Yeah, but um, my concern is that maybe grassroots coaches that might be a bit too much. But don't give it to him. This is about you, it's not about the learner. This is about you, about your knowledge. Some of you will have a good understanding of goalkeeping. And I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, there might be some of you that will say, look, I'll be totally honest, I've got no understanding. And that's all it is about. It's you. So that you go away better equipped when you go on a course, and if you're ever challenged or somebody says to you, well, what do you think about the goalkeeper here? Yeah? That you're in a, and when you go into the course, you'll drip feed it. You'll drip feed this in, rather than it coming in just on block three. I think it was block three. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Rather than it coming in, right? This is goalkeeping. Really, within it, that you start to drip feed within your, your block ones and block twos a little bit of goalkeeping, even if it's only terminology, simple things like at the minute. All we're going to deal with just in possession, out of possession, and over the course, we look at some of this. Because this, this is the game, doesn't matter whether you play a small sided game or whether you play a level B level with international players. This, this is the game. Is that okay? And the last little bit, what I just talked about defending the space behind the defence, yeah? But then defending the space and at the same time defending the goal, which is more dealing with crosses. Whereas that is more support.
I just found that the time I did stand in, I've done it a few times when I've stood in. And I did it against Palace Saint Julia, I did it against Palace, and the hardest ball is a straight ball. Straight ball yeah. And I, it's one of them, should I come, should I go? And by the time I made the decision, Mark Bright had rattled the crossbar and I thought, shit, I'm not coming anymore. I'm staying where I am. It was, it was just so reactive bad. rather than proactive, eh? Yeah. Uh, it's about your goal, you stick a rod up your backside. I did, yeah. yeah. We, we tried to find it on YouTube last night, Tomo, but we couldn't. We've been taken off for YouTube. Uh, certificate 18. Okay, so I have stood in for Tomo when he, he got knocked like, out oh, at go Chester. You don't really tell me that's done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, nothing changed. Just going to hand you over to Andy. We do need to uh, switch over the lights. Um, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, just on, on that, just to sort of link it in just a little. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but what games from level one and two would provide you with the opportunity to do that with your goalkeeper? Break out. Yeah. So you've got games, you've got you've got tools that you can use, but the focus then is on working with the goalkeeper particularly. <coughs> Seeing as that's been a sort of pertinent, pertinent point what's been raised today, that you can work with and talk to the coach about this is a game. You might be talking about over the top of the Jamie Vardy pass or the Aguero pass or whatever it might be to go and score. But this also could be a game for your goalkeeper. So dealing with that, that through ball, or the breakout 1v1. You can also do it in your game related practice when you're um, yeah. playing a high line. Yeah. You can do it there. <coughs> so it's just, it's just really the focus that you, you're sort of looking at. Yeah. But again, Hopefully, picking up on Pete's point and the point was made earlier, what we do this morning, we might say, look, I'm quite comfortable to, to give this a go, okay, based on what the content looks like, because what's happened in the past is when we did the last level two in service for level two tutors, and Tom and myself were talking about it, was as a candidate or learner, it was a little bit hit and miss whether you had the goalkeeping module delivered or not. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we want to try and avoid that if we can, and if it's only from, say, block three that you then get some sort of uh, material that you think you're comfortable to use and share with the candidates, but also talk to them about some of this stuff with it, then hopefully that's what we've, we've achieved. Adam? It'd be useful to get some of this information on the DNA posters, because the goalkeeper's nowhere to be seen. Right. That, for me, when we were chatting, uh, Mike and myself and Martin was, how do you then make the connections? So when we talk about goalkeeping and in possession and out possession <coughs> transition, how do we make connections? Yeah. <coughs> that makes sense? Just the the connection? Just for, for the learners to reference on the course so they can go back to they can look at the posters here about the principles and the technical components, but some of the goalkeeping stuff might be relevant for them as well. But I think when, we, when the, the last DNA sort of got around goalkeeping was it is incorporated, isn't it? It's not being separate. It's part of it. Yeah. Because yeah. if, if, if you highlight it, sometimes you're saying that it's sort of separate. Separate. Yeah. 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 And, and the goalkeeper's in, in simplistic. He's just an outfield player that can use his hands. Oh. So a goalkeeper. Okay, to say that. So not an outfield player. <laughs> <laughs> He's an outfield player. He could dribble all the way up the pitch and smash it in the net. Because. That, I mean, Martin was Martin. Like, yeah. uh, he was really the uh, Martin D. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Too many Martin. <laughs> I forgot to bring mine, so Martin was good enough. We've got these here to sort of put off the wall. I meant to bring mine, but if you were to say, what's the definition of a goalkeeper at the 5 to 11 range, or 5 to 12, as we discussed yesterday, what is it? So, is a player. Mm -hmm. I would suggest. Yeah? Who so perhaps goes in goal? Or they rotate round. So if you talk to the coach, so if I said to you, what's the question you get asked by grassroots coaches when you go and do courses, what would it be? What's the questions that you get asked? So, what was it? What age you specialise? <coughs> what to do when nobody wants to play in goals? 
Come up with an easier one. <laughs> Goalkeeper the rotation doesn't work. You just get them mixed in, Cal. <laughs> Also, when you talked about Julie, the other night, how do I? How do I incorporate GK in my team practices? Okay, that's the one that you you mentioned, which sort of sits nicely what we just what we try and go to because. How many of you send a, send your goalies or want to send your goals off to goalie land? Yeah? And we talked a bit about repetition. So goalie land's good, but if they're sending their goalies to goalie land all the time, they've got a problem. Does that make sense? Yeah? So, question then. How do you retake the goalkeepers? You just come up with a question, what's the answer? Because the, the answer's in the room. This is my position. So I might start to over here at left back and go into goal and go into right back. So yeah. Goal. So if you talk about rotation, your five and six and your goalkeepers, they might take it. Might, you know, the material's there, isn't it? In the, in the modules or the blocks. Yeah? What do you do for your goalkeeper? Play again. Play again. What else? Send them off to Goalie Land. Their mates. What else? Possession based practices, but play on the outside. <coughs> or okay. play on the sides. Alright. But sometimes play in the middle. So, which could be that, couldn't it? How do I include my goalkeeper? So, if it fits back into Darren's definition, which was Darren, if you wouldn't mind repeating it again. I'll rephrase it. Um, a player, not an outfield player, who can use the hands. Yeah. Okay. All right, so is that, is that yeah. sort of. We talk about the LTG goalkeeper player development, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> um, They'll go and play different sports <laughs> over <don't they? laughs> <laughs> what, what age do you specialise? Five. <laughs> what age do you specialise? <laughs> Could be, couldn't it? If you think about it as a player, so if you, if, if you talk about it as a long term player or late development role, Van der Sar. There's, no, there's loads of examples through from, I mean, Van der Sar, what a terrible move that was. Because when somebody said to him, do you know what, do you fancy going in goal? Terrible move that was, wasn't it? Ruined his career. <coughs> yeah. So, <coughs> there is that. I don't know what the impact of youth reviews will have, as you mentioned yesterday, whether that will change that. Because with the smaller goals, smaller pitches. That might have an impact on that, maybe, who knows. But generally, generally be, be with the big goals about the long term goal team development. Well, I think they've trying to make them that. If you look at the ages and stages, yeah, yeah. 5 to 11, which is just that the, the, they are players who so might go in goal. Should there not be a long, should we get rid of long term goalkeeper development if they're players? Do you want to see there's a bit of a conflict? It's, it's their first introduction for yeah. some okay. because they come, they come in, obviously it's open entry, yeah. so it's in within a pre course task for the goalkeeper level one. So it's the parent who's, who's never, um, never been on a coaching course or anything before, so it's just an understanding of really four corners and some of the, the implications so um, because we deliver it at the moment on the course and when we talk about well what are some of the issues you have um, which affect them more so say than, than the player moving in transitioning to a full-size goal yeah. that's a massive problem for a 13 year old 
yeah? So it becomes really specific, the discussions. Yeah. But for the coach who's already been on the FA level one, when they come, what they're not doing is they're not replicating. They'll have ideas from what they did on their FA level one, but they're trying to think with a goalkeeping mentality. Well, one might be some of the issues, yeah? The one is lack of opportunity, because if you've got two goalkeepers in your club, playing time, <coughs> that's, that's another major one. Um, the, the parent thing, of the parent who stands behind the goal and is literally telling the son or the daughter where to go, when to go, how to go, why to go, yeah? So they are, they are just three or four examples of where the discussions normally go. Does that, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah. Alright, so what, what, we're hoping to, what we've discussed and trying to sort of share with you is an opportunity to sort of look at a goalkeeping workshop that might help you on block three. Okay? So again, by the end of the morning, if you say that's, that's, we can use that or we can't use that or what about this or what about that, and this is something we've, we've spoke to Tony about, and Jack, and it's something that we can look to share with yourselves, so, and then you can share with your affiliate tutors and then work with them in relation to block three work, yeah? As that specific goalkeeping workshop. So hopefully it gets delivered, and there's some key messages that get shared with, 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 with the coaches. So all, all we're trying to do, is something, it's a workshop that I've presented a few times. Um, Mark, you did it with your group in coaches in Oxfordshire yourself, didn't you? So I shared it with you, you went away because you didn't want to cancel the session. Uh, did it with uh, Richard's level two recently, Butcher's level two in Bedfordshire, and I went down in a goalkeeping workshop for Christina a few few weeks ago in relation to just presenting this information to coaches. Yeah, so it's something we've we've tried. It's just whether you think it might work for you. Happy with that? Yeah. yeah. So again, it's just making those connections between the DNA if, from a course perspective in, in and out of possession and transition. So we're just going to do a little bit of a setting the scene and then go down to do some practical work. Mike's going to get you diving around, head put in the floor, that sort of thing. <laughs> so hopefully there's a, there's a that few that want to do that. Last that. Night. And then we'll do some practical. We need, about, we need about 12 to 14 to join in. Okay, 12 to 14 <coughs> to join in. A practical. If you're not joined in, there'll be tasks for you to do and feedback in true coach education style. Okay. What's the premise for this? It's, it's an old slide as such, but it's just, just this business. It's some of the sort of information that we'll show is under, underpinned by this. So it's that like being part of the team, it's that like 11 technical players on the pitch. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you knew, but goalkeeper now employ feet to hands. They, 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 they use their feet seven times or eight times more than they do their, their hands. So it's an 80, 20, 70, 30 sort of situation. There's obviously a scenario at Manchester City, you know, with the goalkeepers there and what the role is. Are they, as Martin said, are they a shot stopper or are they, some, are they one of those outfield you know, footballers that just play? Yeah? So it's that, that sort of discussion and dilemma there. These are sort of some World, World Cup things. I'm not suggesting you're going to use these slides and they need obviously DNA in or putting in and linking it in there. So I'm going to use some uh, footage from the World Cup 2014. <laughs> So have you got pens and paper at the ready? You need some pens and paper and I need you to watch the clips to make sense of it. Okay. Right, so do this with the candidates. So what, what did you see for the first clip, Patricia? <laughs> there was double pressure on, so what you see, be, 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 be fair, I'm sorry, support on both sides. Hold on. Double pressure? Yeah. On the defender. Bad decision to try and play out. Should have had a touch and then cleared his lines. So Who? The goalkeeper. So I think it could have actually... Petitio. What it was called. Yes, you. They've actually won, won the Euros last year. To release the pressure on that, though, I think the defender actually played it the right way. 
Okay. I think the the goal, when I think about it, the goalkeeper's in the wrong place. Yeah, so it was the pass. So, here we go then. So this is what you're observing. <laughs> That's what, yeah. that's what was happening, wasn't it? If he plays back there, those two can then carry on the press. Mm. It's, obviously, it's obviously not to scale. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's the biggest six yard box I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? Which, which player is it? Centre half. Five. Okay. okay. Who's he played for? Left footed right. goalkeeper casting us. Now you're right what you're saying, Patricio. Who's he played for? Sporting yeah. Lisbon. Okay. Who does he who does he normally play with? So who is he expecting or assuming that it, where Casillas would be? Potent, possibly, we're only assuming because of that. Yeah, makes sense. Mm. Now, what was your comment, uh, Nigel? It was in the wrong position. I, I, I just think that if the, ball, the, the press is on, if they play the ball back there, the best the goalkeeper can do is launch it because the press will carry on down there. Right, so and that's what I think, and then going that way releases the pressure and you'll have more time to play. That's fine. So, the pass here now would obviously allow encourage that to happen. And it's just not that clear. If he's playing the ball away from him, the ball's behind and everything from the keeper, he's chasing the ball as well when he's not under control. That allows the defenders to actually close quicker. Yeah. Okay. It makes it very more difficult to get his body position right and set, get ready for the pass. If the ball's got a specific... He'd have been over there in the first place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, 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 but that's not going to be You wouldn't have to run over there if it's already there. This, these, are the same, these are the same discussions that the, the level one and two coaches will, and points they'll come up with. They might not actually say in the same, use the same words as you, technically and tactically, but they'll, they'll, they'll come up with the same observations, wrong position. Now, is, is the goalkeeper in the wrong position based on being pressure? You took, you took Martin talked about supporting on the same side or opposite side. If you look at the pre shape where the pass is, the pre shape where the body position of the defender is, his option was gone too early, because he, he can't see how that defender is proposing to deal with it. The way that if he goes and supports that side, the way that the, the, the angle is, he can't pass it back that side. So all you're doing is you're, as a coach, you're putting your thoughts and observations on that, aren't you? In the sense of what you're making sense of it. Just make yeah. Okay. So all the little things that. I'm not, I'm not forgetting. I'm going to go back to it. What else did you observe? Um, After he's kicked it, he's recovering. Oh, kick! Okay. That's a favour in the pot. Oh, oh, GK. Poor pass. <laughs> Hang on a minute. It's a okay. ten for me and a five for it. Yeah. Got loads of money you have. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you observe? Two jobs. Go on. 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 What was the game? First game. Yeah, opening game. 2014 World Cup, Friday afternoon. It's hot. There's a lot of pressure. What, did, what happened to Pepe in three more minutes? Self combusted. You got sent off. So there's lots of emotions there, isn't there? So was some of that emotional state, did that have an impact on this? Does, does, the, does, the, does the issue of being Real Madrid, Sporting Lisbon play a part? 
But also, also I hear Yeah, what size he kicks with? Another yeah. five. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is there's a five. Another five. Did you get that? Not a kick. It's a pass. Even to the opposition centre forward. Sorry. Bear with me. Right. Pete. Shh. No, yeah. What did you see? Right. So that's nil nil. Three nil up. Right. Cheers, Mark. It's nearly 80 minutes. It's hot. He's bored. Humid. <laughs> ten, ten men. They just Portugal just want to go home. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Alright? So is that a factor as that was in a factor here? Potentially. All the other technical stuff is still valid. All that you're saying is valid. What was going on here then? What did you see? High support position. High. Cleared out quickly because of the personal ball back. So the confidence is that what we give it in the confidence he's got to trust himself. Right. Or did, would that be classed as playing through because he took two centre forwards and yeah. two presses out? Yeah. Yeah. Have a, have a conversation with Mark, you two work it out. Is that through or over? Is it is it most of the defence by me in it again? Well. Actually, because you which one would you right. know? Okay, so, <coughs> who does Neuer play or play, or play yeah. for? Bayern. Bayern. Most of the defenders are Bayern, isn't it? Who are the outfield players? Majority of them play for? Bayern. Bayern. Okay, so, contrast that. What have you got? Understanding. Right, so there's a practice familiarity yeah. aspect of it, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. So, whilst we talk about the decision making of both, there's an element of the four corners of play, and if you start to put in some of the DNA stuff around, you know, all the bodies, the boxes, the competition, relevance, realism, etc. Familiarity issue playing a part. But the emotional bit of it, I'm just suggesting because of their efficiency and being well organised and all that. But you're talking I'm about the goalkeeper, mm -hmm. in Neuer, who probably, if we were going to talk about what Neuer does, how many goalkeepers in world football does it as well as him? Right. Okay. So, some of these thoughts into, into play, but if you think about the game situation in that, the game management bit, there's, there's some issues there, so I'm going to do play this bit now, my mate might not be here later. <laughs> what's, what's, your, what's your observations just watching that, because then what we're doing at the end is getting the group to just feed back, because having seen the other clips compared to that clip, has anything, has anything similar or has anything changed? Well, as well, a decision maker, yeah. yeah. consistent for the right decision for the right time. Yeah. It's so not always the team maker. Yeah. It's what you've got to try. Not yeah. show the situation. So go back to some of the slides that Martin put about that, defending that space. Mm -hmm. uh, point about yeah. deeper sweeper, <coughs> supporting goal ball side, opposite side. There's lots of examples in that there, isn't there? The range yeah. of passive yeah. decision making. Yeah. Any other observations? Mm -hmm. What happened there seemed to affect his confidence and what he was trying to do next. 
I cash out the mortgage dropped, he said he'd always fund me to call us a free time to collect them, not to fit to that pass, which was a bad one. Yeah. Okay, how <coughs> long if he needs to? Yeah, go beyond us. As you so, so the suggestion is that he's speed of thought in terms of doing the next thing. Yeah, this is the moment. Yeah, okay. Yeah, his motor skills, his landing was always in motion to attack. Look to be positive when I'm in possession. So, what's the messages for your coaches then from that clip? England and what's, so the key met so the, what we've been now is what's the messages for us as us as tutors to share based on what you've just said because yeah obviously a bit of controversy about Jeremy did practice that or not we don't know yeah and Patricia did they practice it we don't know <coughs> just trying to stir things up. Do you think the depth of support the depth of support the positive posit positive decision making yeah. when under pressure and not under pressure yeah. Um, and then a selection of the type of pass he's going to use at that given time. So yeah. So where does that where does that fit into the DNA? Where's the connections with the DNA? Well, it's about uh, producing scenarios you can make good decisions. Okay. Uh, in that, in that position. So you were talking about um, a, a goalkeeper is a player who can use it, use the hands. Okay. So we. We're still going to mix, have the same messages for the goalkeeper as we are to the outfield players around about this decision making. Okay. Game leader, oh, okay. Game leader practices. Right, because what we're going to do some practical in a minute. We're going to we'll get down there. But you can start to make relationships with this. Yeah? yeah. Right. His passing was really good, so staying on the ball. Yeah. Get the confidence of the goalkeeper. So put them in situations where they'll practice that. <coughs> yeah. Put them in opportunities to be able to practice some of this. Yeah. So there was definitely lots of out of possession stuff and in possession stuff. And you saw some examples of transitioning there, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. So put me examples. What was the one at the front end? Lost that one, so I'm sorry, Keith. Just going to say something. Just now. <laughs> Somebody said, you know, yeah, yeah. Delivering on trails, Keith. You're delivering around the four corner one. Give us, give us a reason why. It's just up there, isn't it? Yeah, just got from the front, and so it's a change to go. And it causes the success. Any clips of English, English goalkeepers? Any clips of any English goalkeepers? So, could be. Great question, Oscar. For me personally, I don't have much of that goalkeeper. What if you're going to describe the field as like a cassette? So go back to one of that one that is that flow of the game was being influenced by the goalkeeper's decisions uh, and the types of passes that they were playing and making the play out for the players. Thanks for that, Dan. And the totally, totally relevant was he that throws the ball out the floor or pass? Pass. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, do we have any clips of any English goalkeepers? Uh, the English goalkeepers that we could use as well. Could do. Just, just so um, to, to link it. <laughs> 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 now, I did say to Martin, if we would, if if you were to say, look. That's really useful to work with. I could use that and work, do something with that with some of our coaches. Mm. Would there be opportunity to do some material like you said with English goalkeepers, yeah. British goalkeepers? Yeah. Now, we could do, but Mar Martin, I don't know what your thoughts would be, Tim and Mike, would be that they're those clips at the moment are really relevant. Two extreme examples Yeah. for me. Yeah, they just give you that what you might, what might happen or what could you do sort of thing and generate some discussion. I'm not saying you won't necessarily look for that, but you could do, it's just, um, you know, t Tim shared them some time ago and I've just been using them for this purpose, just to really get the coaches thinking about how, you know, your question here about, um, How do I incorporate my goalkeeper and the team? And start to make some connections with the DNA stuff and the fundamental. Mm -hmm. uh, to add to that, is there any footage of any female goalkeepers? Oh. No. Alright. Fair enough. 
this is a bit there'll be some out there, we can get some. Yeah, there's lo loads of footage, just just go get in touch and ask. Absolutely ton some. absolutely tons yeah. of stuff like that. Yeah. At all ages, young and old. Yeah. So when you say young, that'll be good. Fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you walk up if you watch the you won't I don't think you're a child, but if you were to walk up and watch the fifteens play tomorrow, that's exactly what you'd see. Exactly what you'd see. Maybe more extreme, I would suggest. To, with, with, when yeah. Okay. It's a really good point here. <coughs> so tomorrow. What you've got tomorrow to, here. Yeah. As you said, really <coughs> good point here. Plain turkey. What you might have to do at some stage is, is, that, is make make it make sense for the coaches at five to eleven, twelve to sixteen, seventeen to twenty-one ish, because it will look different. Could we still do encourage that with the goal? So it's up to eleven. They're still going to be quite selfish, aren't they? For those footballers that might go in goal, potentially. From 12 onwards, it might be slightly different. But for a 12 year old and a 21 year old, it's going to look a different. But can you ask them to do and try and practice the same things? Okay. So you should just was making sense of it. Right, has that been. This is half time. Alright. It's nearly 25 past 10. If we can be. Quarter to eleven. If you want to have a break, coffee. We'll go down to the indoor hall. Mick's going to start it off with half an hour. Then do it some bits with them, with yourselves, and then we're going to go on to some, some other practices just to work through. Have you come, ladies and gents? Have you come, please? Okay. Good morning. Um, my name's Mike Byrne. My task today is to run through for half an hour. It's to run through some of the technical detail that I would normally deliver on a level one or level two goalkeeping course. Um, the stuff I'm going to deliver would normally take about half a day. I'm going to get a quick run through half an hour. Um, if you remember any of it, that'd be nice. Um, I will send some notes out. The notes will be quite extensive. So last time I did this, I did this in 2012, went around um, two regions of level two coaches to show them the goalkeeper module. And they all said, great, love it, too much. They couldn't understand it. It was too detailed for them. So my job today is to demystify it a little bit, give you four or five points that you can take away that you can remember. So if you're not involved in the actual uh, um, playing side, can you take some notes and at some stage, at some stage today, come and point, put some points on here. So I'm going to do, what, eight types of save or, or discussion points. So start position, set position, scoop, Cup, W, collapse, low diving save, high diving save. All right. So I'm going to go through those those technically on here, on this area here. Um, I've got some gloves. Three pairs of gloves already been put on. People might have their own. So there's three pairs there if you want to join in. If you don't, I'm not bothered. But it is it is important that you probably get at least five or six points that you can then discuss and put in technically with the goalkeeper. Um, I think it would be probably fair to say that. Um, if you just watch the ball, you're not going to see what the goalkeeper's doing. So whatever you're doing, you've got to probably be in and around the goalkeeper, behind the goalkeeper, to see what they're seeing in order to start talking about anything that I'm going to talk about now. Because you need to be looking at the goalkeeper, because it's, it's the saving part of the job. All the other bits, yeah, defending the space and all that sort of stuff, um, Andy's going to do in games. So that's why we've got the goals out. And he will show you the games for you to deliver on the course. This is for your information. Okay, and if you can throw it in because you see a problem with the goalkeeper, fantastic. But the actual stuff we want you to deliver will be done in a game style format with Andy after half an hour or so. Okay, happy with that? If there's any questions at any time, please ask. Um, I need you in twos, please. So if you can get in twos, and can you get into this square here? All right, and can you take two flat discs to make a goal? Okay, and just stop there. Just stop there. Chris, Chris, can you hear me all right? Thank you. Now, what we're going to start with is the start position. So where we are in the goal in relation to the ball. All right? So when we talk about the start position, we're looking for ball, keeper, middle of the goal. Ball, keeper, middle of the goal. Go back a bit, Mike. As that ball goes further out, eyes, the goalkeeper can come out to a point, to a point where 
I can deal with that. Okay? So your start position will be in relation to the ball, the pressure on the ball, the depth of the last defender, and things like that. The further you come out, the more you expose yourself for that. So your start position in relation to the ball, okay, is really important. And Andy will go and, act, act, and talk about your back four in games and stuff like that, because start position is something as outfield coaches we tend to speak a lot of. All right? So start position, no, don't need to be on the goal line unless it's a penalty. So it's probably always at least half a yard out, if not more. Depending on how far that ball out, the ball is out, depends how far you come out. All right? So off the line, about a yard or so for here, half a yard. Off you go. Start position. In relation to the ball. Okay, good hand, stop there. Now, once we've got our start position sorted out, so once we've got our start position sorted out, so ball, goalkeeper, middle of the goal, we're thinking about how much depth we've got because of that issue. And of course, if I'm a taller goalkeeper, I maybe come out further because that's less of an issue. Smaller goalkeeper, maybe a little bit further back. Further back I go, bigger the goal gets. But I get more time to react. Yes? So further back I am, I get more time to react. So for instance, top level goalkeepers now will probably be a little bit deeper than normal because the balls move more. Maybe in the old, old days when it actually stayed in flight, you could get down the line a little bit more and make the goal smaller. But you cut your reaction time down. The further you go to the ball, less time to make the save. So think about that. Now we're looking at the set position. So we've got start position, now set position. Set position, first of all, can you all take up a set position, fellas? So the position you'd be in as the ball is about to be struck. Position you'd be in as the ball is about to be struck by a striker. Okay? So if you look around now, you'll see lots of people doing different things, hands in different places. So all we'd say with hand position is, you just need to be consistently good at catching the ball. So if the goalkeeper has his hands out here, 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 or there, as long as they catch the ball consistently, that's the only time you would maybe mention the hand position being incorrect. In general, if we're dealing with young goalkeepers who haven't got a hand position yet, we'd say the ball is normally about, the hands are normally ball width apart. Maybe sort of playing the piano a little bit like that. That's the sort of information we give. So working from the bottom up, toes facing forward, okay, normally feet just slightly outside the width of the shoulders. Okay? Obviously, tighter they are, more balance problems we have. Wider they are, the shorter I go. Harder it is to push off. So we're trying to be nice and balanced. And as the ball is struck, we are still. Elbows outside the line of the body, chest facing the ball, chin forward, nose over toes, brings the weight forward. Heels off the floor. Okay? So that's the, that's the set position I want to see you in. All right? So you'll get... Normal problems with young kids, that one, okay, that one, so there may be two upright, and, or their weight's not forward, so weight forward, nose over toes, hands, ball width apart as such, elbows in front of the line of the body. The reason for that is, I'm going to save the ball there, not here. So get your elbows in front of the line of your body. Have a little check and see what they do. Play. Keep your hands there, don't move them as he strikes. Keep them there. Good. Well done, Al. Al, try to avoid that one. The hands are at the side when you want to catch. Trying to keep them there and just move them to the Okay, so just look in. Lee. Right, so, start position, set position. Now we're talking about fielding balls that are coming to you on the floor, straight on. So, a couple of ways of doing it. So I'm like, all I want you to do is underarm, field just into the centre there. Okay, off you go. So we can just bend forward, little fingers together, pick the ball up. What we try to avoid is people making a movement to the ball as it's moving to you. Because if I do that, and that ball moves, I might be snookered one way or the other for pushing off. So you're still, ball comes in, go on, ball comes in, little basket, little fingers there. All right? So that's the first barrier. We don't have a second barrier if we do that. But if the ball's so easy to pick up, I probably don't need it. Okay? So I don't need a second barrier because it's so easy. If it's got a bit more pace in it, I might have to do something else. So what I could do, a little bit quicker, Mike, is split the legs this time, keeping the toes facing forward, fingers together into the basket there. So two ways, just leaning forward, okay? 
or what's called a little K leg. Can you just do that one, fellas? So from that position, split, step, drop. Now, make sure your feet don't turn. So it's not cricket, we're not doing that, because if we do that, we're only going one way. That ball moves, I can't go that way. This way, if it hits something, I can push and go the other way if need be. So make sure the feet are facing forward. Do not let them twist. If you twist, if you're going on the floor, you've had it. Okay? Keep the knee off the floor and just pick the ball up. Off you go, play. Watch a second, Mike, take the ball. So, what you might see is this. Roll it to me. Okay? Problem with that, what is it? Balance. Okay, so that might be the, the kid who's probably not going to be in goal. Alright? So what we're trying to do is encourage the confidence to split your step and just use your hands. Rather than that one. Okay? Try to avoid that. Off you go. Play. So, start position. Set position. Now if that ball moves, just move around Mike. I now have to keep myself in line with that ball. So ball, goalkeeper, middle of the goal. Move again Mike. So now I'll keep going. Now I'm working on an arc. Keep going Mike. So that's it. There. Cool. That's fine. Drop around again. So this time I'm working on an arc. If I go across, suddenly I leave big gaps. So we're teaching the goalkeeper really to work on a sort of an arc from sort of post to post. Yeah, so I'm working around the arc like that. Set, save. Set, save. So now, just work the ball. Mike, can I have a ball set, mate? Get it set yourself, Mike. So I'm going to play it just to the side, Mike. Just get into line with it. Good. So little movements. Little movements. And if you're facing that way, go that way. Don't run around it. So if the ball's here, go that way. If the ball's there, go that way. Try not to run round it to get it on your best this side. Work off the side it comes to. Play. Well done, Pete. Open legs, Martin. So now if the ball comes in with a little bit more pace, we're looking to scoop this ball up. So this is the sort of scoop. So start position, relation to the ball, ball me, middle of the goal. Set position. Toes, hips, chest, nose over toes, heels off the floor, arms parallel, elbows in front of the line of the body, ball width apart. If this ball is now bounced, so I want you to sort of go back a touch. A bit more. I want you to wrap it in as hard as you can to here. Okay, play. So this time if it's there, it's so quick that I can't skip across, I now need to break my fall. This is where it hurts. If you don't do it right, get this right. So I'm going to land on my forearms. So the next thing to hit the ground is my forearm. Okay? What you'll get with people who don't like it is ow, 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 ow. So the knees should not be hitting the floor. Forearm should hit the floor first. So if I save here, if I save here, I'm pushing from that point there. I don't go backwards. Happy with that? Have a little go at that. So this is the one, this is the dipper. Get ready, Mike. So this is the one that sort of pitches there. Well done, mate. Play! So, Martin's made a good save here, and there's a real good point. So as you go forward, make sure as you contact the ball, you lock the elbows in behind that ball. Let's it will wriggle its way out and go all the way through. So Martin's done a good job there, and also finish it off, keep your head over it. It should end up getting it kicked off. Alright, so finish the save off. Yes, Jake? Put it in here. So it's there, there, there. Okay? Play. So, start position. Into line, down the line, set, make the save. Select the save. Okay, we're going to move on a little bit now from the scoop. One other thing I'm watching, particularly with a couple of guys out here, is as the ball's been struck, you're doing this with your hands. Where do we need them? So if we can encourage goalkeepers to keep them here and move from there. If the ball's further out, you've maybe got time to do that. And also that might give you momentum to do that. So I had a goalkeeper at Rover, Bristol Rovers. He came back after an injury and he couldn't dive. All I did was say, look, if it's far enough out and you've got time, cock your hands behind your back because that will give you that momentum to take off. So if keepers don't want to dive or can't get momentum, think about their hands behind their back to drive them towards the ball. Because it will help. All right, whereas normally we'd say, keep them there because that's what we need them for, rather than that, 
and then the ball comes quick and I can't get them through. All right, so into line, down the line, set, save. So this time it's the cup. So the cup is one that's from knees to sort of chest. So can you just drop it in there, Mike? Let's see. Yeah, just in there somewhere. There. So again, you might K-leg. So it's from that position, split, brings you into line with the ball. This time the hands come out, form a basket. Elbow slightly tucked. And out claps the chest as it comes in. And there's a finishing position. Okay? Now, this save is the one that if we don't serve it in the right place, Mike, can you set yourself? Just look at the ball. If that ball moves, or it suddenly does that, what save are you going to do? Good. So if it comes high, you might use the W. Because it's easier. And some of your kids, some of your goalies, might even bend their knees, flex their elbows to bring the W down here. Well, actually, they should do that. Big no-nos. That. Why? Why is that a problem? I'm off the floor, no balance. No balance. So, tippy toes are alright, but try to avoid that. If they're doing that, they probably should be doing this. Not cupping it. But there's, a, there's somewhere where they choose what to do. Get ready, Mike. So if I do that one, there you go, Mike's great. And again, Mike, give us all. Ready, set yourself. Change your hands. I'll just condition Mike, Pavlov's dog. Play. Play. So throw it into the mid wrist somewhere, let him deal with it. Okay, just relax there. Now, if the ball, if the ball goes slightly to the side, we're now looking for you just to keep those feet shoulder width apart and skip into line with the ball. So if it does come down the side, just throw it down the side, Mike, just slightly. Just skip into line the ball. Yeah, ball you, middle of the goal. Okay? So just skip, if it's not perfect, don't hold your hands out, none of that. Okay? Get in behind it. And if it's far, it's too far away from the body, you probably should be using another technique. If you're holding your hands out there. We'll talk about that in a minute. Alright, so be ready, Mike. So I'm going to throw it just down the side, Mike. Skip across. Good. And be careful. Be careful with that. Yeah? Why do we need to keep our feet in contact with the floor? Why? Because at any time, I might have to go back. Because that ball moves. If I'm in the air, I can't push off. So none of this. There should just be little rabbit marks on the floor from where you're skipping across. Play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's more than So into line, down the line, set, save. Okay, ball me, middle of the goal. So now we're looking at, so that's a cup. Now we're looking at the W. So just throw it a little bit higher, Mike. So this time the W there. Again, looking at the back of the ball, thumbs might be just touching or slightly apart, thumbs along the midline of the ball, so if the worst that happens is it hits it, it does that. If you're catching underneath the ball here, and it's hard, that's going to happen. So get the hands in the midline of the ball, so the worst thing that happens is that it hits the floor afterwards. So if it's really powerful, I might do that and pick it up. Okay? So think about where you catch the ball. No flower bowls. No catching it underneath, catch it in the midline with your thumbs along the midline of the ball. Thumbs, fingers on top. Got it? Play. Again, moving on. So that's the W, nice and easy. Hands out forward, just going to cup it into the line of the ball. There's the W, look at that window through there. Just relax the arms, the arms are about, well, whatever distance it is. Book will say 18 to 12 inches, whatever. Idea is that you've got enough distance here, so if, the, if it's powerful, I can take the pace off it. Got it? If I'm waiting until I catch it here, the head might move, the head moves, you're unbalanced. So catch it early, and then you can use that cushioning distance to bring it in. So the head should not be moving around. Head moves, you move. No balance. Okay, so one more. Throw it into line. Go on in. There. Okay. Got it? Play. Good. Okay, and relax. Can we just walk in a second? Gents. Can we just leave a gap so obviously Jack's filming this? So if you just come over, because I just need you to see this, because this is where Every it gets um, interesting if you don't do it right. So now we're going to look at, we've looked at balls, in, so we've been into line, down the line, set, decide what save we're going to make. So we've done scoop, we've done cup, we've done W. Alright? So now we're working the ball that comes on the floor, alright? That is really quick. So we haven't got time to skip behind it. 
We're not going to kick it. We're not going to kick it, although there might be times to do that because of speed of the ball, proximity of defenders, and just reactions. What we're going to do is make a save. This is called the collapsing save. So this ball is really quick. But it's so close and so quick, you cannot skip across. There's no time. So what I need to do now is collapse. I need to get rid of these to get there. So what we'll say is, that nearest leg is just going to drop behind this one, create some space and get in behind. One hand behind, one on top. Landing. Come in, come in, look at the arm. Because this is the point. Kids will land on their elbow. So this arm needs to be along the line of the floor. Because kids will do that. If you do that, you pop your shoulder. Okay, so really important. Now if you want to, okay, what you can just try is this. There, on the floor on your knees. You can do all these things starting on your knees if you want. I'm just showing you some detail, alright? So this is the way to do it, watch. So here, nearest leg, drop, down. Okay? Off you go, have a go at that. Collapse and save. Well done. So what we might think about, also, if it's really quick, Mike, put it there, put it there, is just get down. But this is where it hurts. If you don't know what you're doing, it hurts. Okay? So, you need to do, if, you, if you're helping the goalkeeper, and they're constantly kicking it away, giving the ball back to the opposition, can you help them with this nearest leg, dropping out the way, clear the area, one hand, two hands, drop. So it's quite mechanical, and it should not hurt if you do that. It should not hurt. Okay? Say again. So, as we go down, watch, contact points, watch. So there, contact points, sides and forearms. So, here. Yeah, outside the leg there. Stop it, trap it. Head in behind. Okay? Ready? Let's go in there. There. Good. Elbow. Both hands, that's why hands together now are important unless you make one handed save. Yeah? So hands together, stop it, trap it. So that's a collapsing save. Cut the ball, mate. Or you hurt yourself. I'll take the ball, mate. Okay, I'm looking. Moving on, guys, because we've got to go over there. Do it all by us as well. Now, so now we're looking at, so we've done scoop, cup, W, collapse. And now we've got a save that is further away than a collapse on the ground. So it's a low diving save. What we're looking for here is to catch the ball in front of us. So this is where this nose over toes, weight forward comes in. Hands in that catching position, ball's there, I'm going to step towards the ball, depending on how far and where you want to jump, depends on how big that step is. How much power am I going to get generated? Speed on the ball, how tall I am. So if I'm courtois, that's probably a little step and I'm diving outside the line of the goal, because I'm massive. If you're Shea Given, only six foot something just, okay, you might have to take a couple of steps first. So if you're farther up, far away, it might be one, two, step towards the ball, eyes on it, hands lean, okay, try not to come across your body so you can't see it, and then we get one hand behind and one on top, there. So watch again, okay, so into line, down line, set, step, save. One stops, one traps, head in behind, balance in position. So this is why we do a lot of core work with goalkeepers. Because somebody who's not strong here would probably end up doing that. So if we're rolling all over the place, it's because we can't control this from here. Okay? So this top leg is really important. If it moves about, we're moving about. Okay? So one more go, just watch again. So step, eyes to the ball, hands, stop, trap. Okay? So place the ball there or roll it gently so you make it have a go. Make sure it's far enough away that you must step towards it. Okay, you must step towards the ball. So it must be quite a way away. Okay, so, into line, down the line, set, make the save. So this time, it's a high diving save. So anything a high diving save is off the floor. Okay? Now, I don't expect you to go flying, all right? Because I'm not, all right? But all we'd say is, can you just throw that ball sort of at, at that white, this there, yeah, so it's step, it's in the air, there, break. Okay? So whether that's in the air, in your landing, or just a step and save, it's not a problem. Just there again, so step, 
Sorry, Alex, we'll stand by. Ready? Yep. So step there, there. Okay? So it's the same step in same principle as before. Just the ball's in the air. All right? Now, if the ball's really smashed at you, what might you do in the game? Use one hand. Yeah? It deflect. So goalkeeping CPD, catch, parry, deflect. Catch, parry, deflect. CPD, catch, parry, deflect. Think about that. Yeah. But yeah, if you can skip across and catch it, yeah, you're countering, aren't you? That's why you wouldn't advocate at any time the goalkeeper doing that unless he's in a crowded area. So if you catch it there, keep it there, go through the melee, counter. There's no need to do that, it's just another thing that can go wrong. Catch it, yeah, go forward with it, do what you need to. But yeah, you're right, Pete, there you go. But we're just practicing that catch then. So happy with that? First of all, thank you to, to everybody who took part. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit more now, so you get a chance to do some stuff over there. So keep your gloves with you. Yeah. Um, so so my, my, my remit was just to try and give you enough information for you to stand by the goal. The goal is making some sort of save to have a comment on it if, if you can and help them out. Okay? Thank you very much. That's my bit done. Those that take part, can you take your rings and watches off? And any belly button piercings? Right. If you're going to take part, <coughs> you, if you're happy to take part, yeah, I'm happy for you to join in. Remember, right, yeah. I know where you live, yeah? Okay. <laughs> right. <coughs> so, just to, set, just to set the scene, I'm going to need 12, 13, 14 players. Don't really matter. If we, if we get more, we can work with more. If we have less, we can work with the less. We'll try and work with less. My, pre my premise and my setting the scene now is, when, when you join in initially, you're all goalkeepers. So you're my, you're my um, grassroots under 13s, and you, you're all goalkeepers for the first part. Does that make sense? Okay? I've tried to, to work within a typical sort of area of a third of an astro. And if you think it back into the fundamentals, the carousel stuff, using the same space, the different practices, that's where, what I'm, where I'm coming from. All right? Okay, so whoever's taking part, can you, um, if it goes white, yellow, white, yellow, 14, so seven yellows, seven whites. We're gonna work inside it, the, blue, the blue area, okay, which is in the middle of this pitch, and it's 30 long by 20, 20 wide. Just put bibs on and just stand over there for me. You don't need gloves, unless you want to wear them, you can. You don't need them to begin with. Don't do it. <coughs> so I need seven whites, seven yellows. We've got people to join in? People to join in? Gary Sprick. Minimum of 12. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. I need two more whites and three more yellows. Come on! We need two more whites and three more yellows. Come on! Come on! Come Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need one more white, two more yellows. <laughs> Join in, Mick. Are you doing me a favour? Come on, Christina. We need the ladies to join in. Come on, Christina. Cheers, Mark. Are you joining in, Mark? They need to be yellow. Yellow. <laughs> Need to be yellow, yeah. Okay. okay. So. <laughs> and we'll we'll sub in and out when we need to. Okay. So. Come on then. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. So you're all goalkeepers, we're going to work in this area, 30 by 20, it's whites versus the yellows, you score a pa pass by throwing it and catching it, and 10 passes to, 
to score a goal. So it's whites versus yellows in the blue. So that's one, that's two, that's three. If we've got it, yellows need to get it off us. When the yellows have got it, whites need to get it off the yellows. You can throw it or if you can run with it. But if I've got tagged and I've got possession of the ball, if I get tagged, they give the ball. Now, if I'm stood still, if I'm stood still and you tag me, I keep it. Okay, makes sense? Yellows versus the whites. Hey, hey. So what we you to do if you're, if you're not taking part, come on in, come speak to me nicely. So just as before, some pens here. He'd want to just make some notes around where we're working in the four corners. There's things around coaching styles, uh, intervention methods, key factors. If you want to do anything with the, the tactics board to write any notes down in relation to what we're doing around organisation, management of practice, etc. Make sense? Okay, so just, just work in threes and fours and just work from that point of view. Right, Julie, can you score for the yellows 10 passes? Yeah. But can you score for the white? <coughs> yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Come on, what? Come on, yellows, you need the ball. Okay, and stop there, stop there. Get the idea? So, what's the scores on the doors? Okay, and the white? Three. Right, just putting an halfway line in. We're still working inside the blue area. Yeah, this time you've got to get yellows in this half of the pitch to get your six passes. White's got to get in this half of the pitch to get your six passes. So if I'm a yellow, does this count? Yeah, it does. But if I'm a yellow and on this side, does that count? No. Okay, ready? Go. Six passes, yeah. So all I'm doing when I'm working with the coaches, doing something like this, is talking about what am I doing, throwing and catching games. So I've set the scene, they're all goalkeepers. So they're my under nines and tens, or thirteens, for the, and this is like an arrival activity. They're all goalkeepers. Okay? They're, so as I said before, they're all goalkeepers. The context is they're all having a go at goalkeeping tonight in this practice. They're throwing and catching it as they would do in a goalkeeper. <clears throat> now I'm not I'm not necessarily coaching it, but you'll see that the game will change. So kids will kids will make sense of it, how they can gain advantage. It's, in, it's, in, it's an invasion game now, yeah, it's an invasion game sort of practice and they'll just make their own little sort of tactical adjustments to it. Okay, hold it there. So just getting the flavour. What a mark. Yes, please. Okay, everybody all right? Scores. Two for yellows. So, so running total, three, two. Right. Practice now changes, so you see the orange small cones, orange small cones, yeah. yeah, yellows you're playing that way, whites are playing that way, okay, so to score, you have to score with a javelin throw to no knock the marker over, javelin throw, now you can, it's still the pitch is the blue markers, so you, if you go out the blue markers, the ball is out. Okay? Yes. The other, the, other, the other condition is, if you miss it, you've got to go and fetch the ball. 
the team that's then just going to attack again, get the nearest ball and start again. 3-2, play. So they score now, Julie, but with a javelin throw, knocking the marker over. No goal! No goal! No goal! You've got to stay in the blue! Got to stay in the blue! Got to stay in the blue! Stay in the blue, Danny! Danny, stay in the blue! No goal! Get the nearest one! Nearest one! Nearest one, stay in the blue! Nigel, 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 Nigel. go and fetch your ball. Go and fetch your ball. Go and fetch your ball. Go and fetch it. Go and fetch the ball. No goal! No goal! No goal! You're in the, you're out of the area! Javelin throw. You've got to be in the blue markers though. The, not the, it's the coconut. Get your ball, Christina! Play! Keep in the blue area. See, they're all cheating. Cheats. Fetch your ball, Mark! Fetch your ball! Yeah. Fetch your ball, Lee! No, I know. That's all right. What a mark. What a mark. What a mic. Fetch your ball! Okay, stop there. <laughs> stop there. Right. Okay. Good. Okay, stop there. Well done. Well done. You're in the goal there then, uh, Chris. Come in, Mark. We need a white now, Nigel, to be a goalkeeper behind the blue markers and between the, uh, the red cones. So you're there in that. That's your technical zone. So, Chris. Between the blue and the red markers, that's your technical zone. Nobody else is allowed in there. We play a normal football. Okay, you score now. Yellow still play that way to get it into How do score? your hands or feet to score. They pass it into your hands or feet to score. You can play normally. Chris White's play that way into his feet or hands to score. Normal football. Play. Get another ball! Get another ball! Starting with another ball. No go! <laughs> Yeah, that's your technical zone. Yeah, one nil. Play, play. Play on. Hands or feet. Ball out. Ball out. Blue line. Yep. I've always been refing. Pass it in. Pass it in. Play. One all. Next team scores. Wins. Next team scores. So I'm going to come back to you and give, ask you some questions, observations and feedback to the group if there's anything you want to ask questions on.
Good, okay, stop there. Well done, Chris. Hold it there, keep your bibs on. Walk in. Walk in, keep your, yeah, you two, you won two, one. <coughs> nice. Nice. You won that one, two, one. Overall score then, Julie? Overall score? Uh, no, yeah, it was How many did you have, Julie? Yeah, it was five on there. It was five on there. Okay, so just, just very quickly, so I just was talking to the guys on the side about this could be, I've set the scene, you're all goalkeepers, this could be an arrival activity, yeah? Or it could be your warm-up, or it could be your first practice where you're just doing some movement and handling. Make sense? But what we've just done, we've done some invasion, guy, invasion type practices, okay, that we could link back into the level one and two t uh, practice Practices, whatever. All right? <laughs> practices, practices. Now, what you might want to do as, as tutors then is why, why, do, why are we getting these to be all goalkeepers? Why are we getting them to throw it and catch it? What's the reasons for that? So it's all about a bit of long term development because it's a discussion you get into with your groups. Long term development in what sense then? Okay. Good. So they start to sort of talk about that. Anything else? Oh. Right. So their heads up. They've got an awareness. It's helping with their awareness. Their game, game craft. Yeah. Because you're starting to play out, and you started to play through, and you also th looked about playing over and onto, didn't you, Chris? <coughs> yeah. Okay. <coughs> so fun and enjoyable. It, I would have had the balls on the outside because it does break down at, with some groups because you're, you're a, a mature adult, sort of like, like to think you know what you're doing group. Sorry, Nigel. Sorry, Nigel. Sorry, Nigel. Sorry, Nigel. Go on then. Hold on. No, that's fine. That was, that was just them so being there, wasn't it? That's fine. And I was quite happy with that, because if it's, a, if it's my first practice, it's a social thing, isn't it? They're coming in. But what did I do in one of my practices that I could encourage that they use goalkeeper techniques? I conditioned it. So you've got to do an underarm, or you've got to do a javelin, or an overarm throw. Yeah. So you can work, you can work along those. And to go back to what Mick was talking about there, some of the techniques might come out in this when they're catching the ball. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just a safety bit, isn't it? Whatever they would want to do. So if you was my, so it, you're a group of 14, but two of you would be, say, my goalkeepers on Sunday. So if it's my 13s, if it's an under nines group, you're all having a go at going, and you might have a rotate. We might all rotate round, so you might all have a little go at that at some stage, mightn't you? Does that make sense? Yeah. The other thing is, from an ABCs and technical coordination point, but most of your youngsters, your players, will throw and catch it before they'll kick. So now I've got composed possession, they can start to think about their awareness as Nigel's talking about it. <coughs> and there's a bit now a game craft about decision making in relation to who do I pass it to, where's my help, where's my mates, all that sort of stuff. Does that make sense? So <clears throat> you start giving a wise, why, why might I do this with all my players? And at some point, where did we end up? The ball at the feet, yeah? Make sense? Okay, so if you look at the practice, uh, what was the first thing we did? Got them going. It was a multi-directional possession game. Okay? Score 10 passes to, to get a goal. Make sense? What did we do next? Before that. Right. So what did that add to the practice? Direction. A bit more conge congestion. But it added direction because you're scoring in yours now and you're going from one zone. So that, it's, it's now linking into that invasion game principle which they might talk about at level one. 
Sorry. Groups will do this, they'll say, we'll let them have it in there and we'll drop off. Others might go, you know what, we're scoring, win it over there, let's don't let them get it into that art part of the pitch. You can bring out penetration with uh, counter-attacking, because when they get it, we'll leave a mate up here where we can start to get that ball to them quickly. So they can build that <coughs> game understanding in different ways and how you depends on how you want to design the practice to get it out. So we've gone from multi-directional to directional. There'll be some tactical considerations that will come out of it. What else did we do then, Jackie? <coughs> so we've got the, the cones on the outside. You should have played in the blue markers, but we've got the cones on the outside to try and knock over with a javelin throw. If you didn't know what a javelin throw was, don't worry. But it was, all I'm doing is now making it a bit more goalkeeper specific in relation to that's how you score. If you don't, you don't count. All right? Why did I put three cones in there and not one or two? More goes at having a go. So it stops. I keep you out of the area so it doesn't become French cricket. I also give you three because if now, how do we attack that goal? Most definitely. So we're going to attack that goal centrally or down the flanks or in wide areas. So that's why I've put three in there. Not, not, could have put up two in there. I could just put one in there. You, they can decide how, and it will change the game. It will change the game. So that was my thinking about that. Then, but then where did we end up? Yep. Yeah. So, right, so I've got my goalkeeper at either end, and they're in their technical zone, or what we sometimes call safe zones. They're now catching it and kicking it, and hopefully now they're playing a game of football, uh, so what practice is this from level one? Target. Okay, so it's, again, you can link back to some of the stuff on your practices in your practice design. Okay, so we've got goalkeeper there. They're having a goes at catching it. They're having a goes at passing it out. So Nigel's trying to pass it and, and Chris are trying to pass it out to their teammates in different ways, uh, either with their hands and feet. Now with eight and nines, this is going to look completely different because it's going to be eight and nines playing it. Yeah, with 17s and 18-year-olds, it's going to look different because it'll be 17 or 18. Years. But you've, you've done these. This type of practice will lend itself right across the spectrum from 5s to 21s, I would say. Well, but how did you describe that practice for you, Danny? Fun and enjoyable. Okay. So there's that link. So, so making those links to your, to, your, um, to your work, your coach education blocks and the DNA stuff. Any questions about what we've just done there? Because we're going to go back out again in a minute. Anything around organisation? Did we put anything around technical detail in there? Okay. What about the intervention methods, coaching strategies and styles? Any observations from that? Bit loose. Trial and error. Experimental. Let them get on with it. Yeah. But you can, the coaches can make it whatever they want. All right? Okay. Right. Can we, <clears throat> we're going to go back out there now. Slightly, slightly different. So, Chris, just the, so, so same practice. Chris and Nigel, you can, quite happy to stay where you are, yeah? Can we have two, which way is that? Two, two yellows going that way and two whites going that way. Okay, now if there's three in there or if there's four in there, it don't really matter. But go back to your, the, all it would be is, if I had an odd number, I'd just adjust the numbers in the middle. Goes back to overloads and underloads. Oh, that was the other thing. Why did I ask the um, person that shot and missed to go and fetch the ball? What did it create? Overloads, underloads in the, in the practice. So then they might start, how can we use that up to their advantage? You can start to explore tactically that. Yeah, do I want to miss? There's some of that comes out of it. Do I have a go? And if I miss it, I've got to go and fetch it. I'm, I'm not helping my mates out. Makes sense? There's some underload, overload considerations in that. Okay, so <clears throat> if Chris stays in there, Nige, two yellows down the side. So we're going to use the blue area between the blue and the yellow. Okay, so the players will be in this sort of, again, technical zone. 
There's no tackling in the outside area to begin with. But we're going to get the players, you're going to play it and get it through to the other end to score and then back out from there. If you want. <clears throat> they, they just pass it into the goalie or pass it out to the goalie. Yeah? Okay. Look, all, all I'll do is set this practice up for you. You can see where can, I, where can I use it if I want to use it. Where can I take it? Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, could be, but what you can start to consolidate is some of the goalkeeping specific stuff. Chris, Ryan, you got the ball? Let's make sure you got a ball. That's alright then. So you're playing three in the middle, they've got four in the middle. That's okay. That's okay. Alright, ready? From you then, Nige. Score the ball, get the ball up to the end and play. Play, yeah. Okay. There you go. So now, what, there's, there's some pros and cons with this, because these might either make the game or trip the game up. I need two helpers. I need two helpers. Anthony, you've seen this, Christina. Where's Christina? Oh, she's on the pitch. Who? Simon? Right, what I'm going to get you, to, Anthony, what I'm going to get you to do, we're going to work with uh, Chris and Nigel. If you work with Nigel, at some point now, when the ball comes into him, they need to just check the shoulder and you will have that. So it's a, it's, um, it's a, it's a traffic light skin. And you just have just got the side here. So it's here, look. Just to the side, this side or that side. Just putting them up when, it, when the ball's coming into him. He has to tell you what colour you've got up. And you can move from side to side. Well, when it's relevant, when it's relevant. Just on here, Anthony, I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you in a minute. Simon, stay there. Simon, stay there for a minute. Just stay there for me. Okay, just hold it there. Yeah, hold it there. Now, thinking behind the practice. Nigel. Yeah. So, you need to use your imagination on this one. Manuel Neuer. Manuel Faulty Chowers. Neuer. Neuer. Okay. So, what we're looking to try and do, I've got, I've got two things here. What I'm now going to try and do is think about those other bits on the board, the numbers. So, this is my four. So, there's three of you. This is my midfield three. This is my four. You're going to be my ten and my eight. Go on. Push right up. <coughs> Yeah, so my two or my seven, my three or my eleven. Yeah, so I'm trying to link it back into the game. So it might be I play, or it might be my five and six. Make sense? Now I've just I've just used Simon and Anthony as a little bit of a stimulus or a visual cue. So in the sense of if I'm playing it this way, ready, and I'm looking to support and it comes back to me, I'm looking back now, I'm looking for a better pass, 
from the thing. So what we might do now is, that's Pepe, wasn't it? Didn't look, just kicked it back, hoping it was going to be going back to Manuel Neuer. So you can start to build in this. If he's going to do, he needs to do a Mertesacker in check, make eye contact. Before he gets it, he now needs to say, checking his shoulder because he's going to go out the other way, blue. I could have another one on this side, so you, it's a choice, you might want to introduce him or not. But it's just that now, I get it back, yeah, blue. Yeah, and I'm just blending it into that sort of area there. Okay, same side as that side. So if he gets it back, it then might now go there, over, and we go into there. Make sense? So there's your manual Neuer, Patricio. No tackling to begin with. <laughs> Did you look? So you can start to introduce... Look, I'm not going to give loads of stuff. Then you just chip in. <coughs> What's that? So what we're doing now, do you remember Manuel Neuer? So he's working with his five or six, or three or two, passing it out. He's getting it back. Yeah. And he's building up possession. He's keeping possession. Look. So Simon's like a, a sort of a visual stimulus. You want him to do this. So it's a traffic light game. So when it goes up the other side, I just want my player to check the shoulder. So before it comes to me, he's got a blue up. If I, if I got two, two, one of you that side as well, I could be doing the other side. Oh, it's another blue. They're just a traffic light game. No, it's just a visual cue. Yeah. Do you want the goalie to go blue? Yeah, it's just an idea if you want to add it into it. Now, are you going to defend that, Yellis? Ready? And play. Right, we'll talk about it at the end, then. We'll talk about it in a minute. Play on. more to do with the other side, he's checking his shoulders, it comes back out the other way. Okay, hold it there. Walk in. Just walk in. We're going to keep the same ideas, we're going to just build on this. So, what I've done is just trying to make it game related. So there's my unit in there for yellows. Give them, start to give me some sort of numbers. And this is my manual lawyer, yeah? Question was about what's, what's Simon's role? Now if I had two assignments, one this side and one that side, it's really, as I said earlier, so just, just go out there for me, uh, Martin. <coughs> if we're looking to keep it, it's just really about checking shoulders. It's just like for your goalkeeper. Just, he's just now doing a traffic light, visual stimulus in the sense of, if the ball goes out there and it's coming back, all I'm asking Simon to is yellow. It's just really I'm doing that sort of shoulder check. It's just a consideration. If you want to put it into your practice, you could have one, it depends on the numbers of players or people you've got. It just helps them to check their shoulder. Yeah? Could be. Could I do that, could I do that for my number four? My number ten? my number eight or my number five or six in the practice. All I'm doing is making it specific to my goalkeeper. Right. So think about the clips. Yeah. In possession. Okay? So we're building from that defensive third, defensive half, building forward. So if you just come back here, um, Sal, come back there, Martin. All right. I don't... No, no, he, he just went in the wrong position. Yeah, you're, you're 
That's look, that's my fault. That's my fault. I think, no. That's my fault. No, no, that's my fault, because I think I wasn't clear I wasn't clear enough in the instructions. Okay. So from your point, Keith, now, this is the manual Neuer bit, but it can still be the Pepe bit. Because what we're saying now, ball goes wide now, we're going to go into a minute in a minute. If that's Pepe and he now comes under pressure, does he now check and we make eye contact? Yeah? Now, if I'm Patricio, I've gone deep. Because he's under, put him under pressure, Dan. So now I'm creating that angle and distance to drop back in. Yeah? Does that help? So it could, no, so what we can start to build on is that if that's uh, Patricia or Botang, yeah, now there's no pressure on him. Do I need to have that? Is it low left to receive it? Or do I get high and I go on that opposite? So penalty spot, high right. So if I'm there now, what does he make, need to make sure it happens? That eye contact, he's a murder sacker. I get it back in. And now we're looking to build and work from there. Does that make sense? We're going to go on to that in a minute. Yeah, so same from there. If Sally gets it, am I in that low right? Or no pressure, or as a context would be, I might get it high left and we talk, you know, receiving it and playing it out, making decisions now which pass to make based on the, some of the clips that we saw earlier. Yeah? All right, sorry. So what happens is, I quickly spot him. Where, where have I seen him? Where should he spot him? In the middle. Yeah. Outside the line. Okay, so Outside what happened the now? The last time I saw him, he was there. Yeah. So now move to support me. That's where I saw him. You hit the post anyway, so we're all right. Here. Lucky. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, if, if I see him, and he points there, if I see it, head goes down, now he moves, I'm going to pass it to where I saw him. And that's not where he is after he supported me. So that's that timing of seeing where he is. And I, I, I see that in a game, where the, this player is just half the way wide. So it's the timing of looking at that player to make sure you get the spot. And that visual clue of where I want you to put because this, this player now, if you look at the game the other night, if it's the full back there, or the wide player, I'm Fonte. Or Virgil, the other side. I've just dropped off to create some depth of, of support behind the ball. Yeah, and that's all the goalkeeper's doing. <clears throat> In that sense of in possession, that half is just now providing an additional support mechanism for the team now to build the attack. Okay, okay, so, so far? far? Any, Any other questions? questions? No. Uh, Go on in. Bloody hell. Come on. Like right, those trainers. Where, where would everyone want in there to get to me to Depends on the pressure, too. There's the pressure. I know. Now, where do you want to Higher up. Yeah, to do it quicker then. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, we've got to start drip feeding that in and then if you just flip that on its side so let's go bear with me here um, yeah. 
and this is a right back, getting some pressure on the ball. Where would you position him? Ah, further up this way, and take him out the pass. Because if, if, if she's here, that's not taking him out. So that's just flipped on the side, it's just a principle of play, isn't it? That you're trying to eliminate the opposition with a pass. Okay, so that's what I was touched on, and obviously Tim and Mike have sort of added to, in just now, because what, what position is Chris and Nigel playing in this practice? They're playing like they would do in the game, aren't they? So all they're now doing is getting a chance to be that or do that and feed and, and, and see the pictures that they would hopefully see, similar pictures they'd see in the game um, to make those passes. So we've just putting, giving them an opportunity to practice. Make sense? Yeah? Happy to just carry on, I'm just conscious of the, just want to do another two little progressions. Because what we're going to do now is, based on that, you can now, once you've, st we'll start where you are, you release yourself and then it becomes a free game, all in. You can go and then go and score. The goal's at the end, yeah. No, no, you don't need another yellow. What? So if it gets it from here, White's your active, he gets it in there and he drops back into here. Yes? Yeah, that's now the trigger to attack. That's the trigger, that's the cue to attack that goal. Okay, same the other way. Start with nice, stay nice and tight. You drop off, then we start the practice. You in this, you start the attack. Yeah, so it's going to be the goalkeeper that starts the attack. Bit of repetition. Play. Yeah, it's for all in. Now you could keep the, you could keep the, you could keep the conditions in there. Yeah. So they can stay locked okay. in. Stay locked in. I've just freed it up because I'm just seeing the time as an issue. Make sense? Now, got another job for you. He's gonna you're gonna work with you're gonna work with Chris. He needs some of that extra training that he's just been doing with my family. Alright, so you're gonna just go on, go on the pitch, a couple of balls and just do some handling catching with him. Okay, now. He tells you when to stop. There's a, couple, there's a couple of balls there. He'll tell you when to stop. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just keep playing until we get a goal or it goes out of play. Then back to your start positions. Yeah, stop back to your start, play it out. Goes back to the keeper. And then it starts again, goes back to the keeper. Then we play, we're live. No, no, score. Cool. Only if it happens at that end. Where's uh, Anthony? Need another Rebecca. Do, do this for me. Nigel just needs to do a bit more practice of what he was doing earlier on shot, shot, shot stopping or, or, or catching. I'll tell you what, Mark, can you kick? No. Mark, can you do it? Just deal with, uh, deal with his back pass. So he's doing more back passing across. So one of you go one side, one of you go the other. Just work in that this third on his back and you just work with He tells you when to stop. Yeah, so we cut, I'll just come down. So one of you go, yeah, we've done that. So you work with Nigel when the ball's up the other end and he tells you when to stop. You tell them when to stop. They're going to work with your back passing. Well done, well done yellows. Now, all I've done, this is what you're thinking, what I'm doing now is, and you'll watch the game, I've, as the players appear, 
Rebecca and Mark are doing some back pass. He's having a chance to do more back passing up that end with those two. But he tells them when to stop. Okay, so this is practice night. He's having a few more goes at doing the back pass. He, he's going to have a few more doing the catches. But he tells Simon when to stop. Simon, get on the pitch. Do some shooting. And, yeah, t get on the pitch. But get on the pitch. You're the referee. Yeah. See ya. So when the ball's up there, no, no. Here you are, here you are, here you are. You tell me when you want it. Okay, he's just going to tell me when he wants it. That's okay. Want it? Get in your eyes. Okay, no, you, you tell me when to stop. You tell me when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Fight! Chris, start the game. <laughs> so he's look where's, where's he was looking for that longer pass there, wasn't it? So could, could Chris, going back to Tim's point, be higher up the pitch to receive it? Make sense? Okay, and stop there. Walk in. Your teams. Okay, now just just to finish it off. So <clears throat> this is what I was thinking. Okay. So what I was as I did before when we first started there, I got them conditioned in and locked into their area. So Sally and, and Martin were doing that bit. Uh, Alex, Mike and um, Mark were doing the midfield bit and all I'm just doing is giving them some sort of structure and shape to it yeah and I went with the yellows because I thought they needed a bit more help but they did okay didn't they yeah now layer in that sort of information that share that information that we just talked about in relation to eye contact quality of pass back Stuff that Mike was talking about, Tim was mentioning in relation to that. Because you know, because I didn't go into it too much because I'm just conscious of the time that you, we, we, we've got. But hopefully, it gives you a flavour of what you can probably do with your group or with that practice. Yeah. So this one then is the board's gone out. It's, it's, he's practiced it, and now he's sort of either stayed high to get it back to so now we can go and attack, or goes low because there's now a bit of pressure and starts to work on, on the decision making. Yeah? So once that happens, and if the Whites win it, they just go and attack. 
If the yellow's running it back, it's just a gain. You can start to bring in offside, you can start to, you can have them to lock it in, or you can have them free it up like we did just because of the last five minutes, because of the time element to it. Yeah? So could you use that sort of structure, practice, to develop that bit about, especially about in possession? What would out of possession look like when the ball's up the other end? It might be that deeper sweeper role that Manuel Noe had in the last clip, and doing that kind of work. Yeah, of course you can. This is this is going back. It's twenty years at least. That's as close as I was at the other show. Don Hal was there. He said, "How do you coach?" Walk up the 
pressure on me. Yeah.
Charlie, Charlie, are we going to go straight to lunch and then go back in the room afterwards? Okay, just but I just I just need to t tie tie up some loose bits in relation to the session. So is that is everybody okay with what Martin's saying? Yeah. That helpful. Now I don't know if we, we didn't script it that way, but are you happy about if you if you felt you needed to have some templates, some practices that you could develop some of that DNA stuff in and out of possession? These would be types of things we've done this morning with Mick and myself. You'd be comfortable to go out and use or potentially make best use of them, yeah, to help your coaches, yeah? Okay. Now, the last, the last, so we feed it off, we ended up, where did we end up? In a game. And I got Simon to just do, well, when the ball was up the other end, say, do some work with Chris, some catching, and then uh, Nigel, where is he? Yeah, down the other end, um, Mark and Rebecca, they did some sort of back passing. Now, what was it like for you two having that extra sort of attention with, with the... Right. Yeah. Okay. So, now, this is, this is training night, and we're talking about involving the goalkeepers in the practice. So rather than them going off to goalie land, there might be some nights that they can be doing that in the practices. Okay? Now, there's a trade-off, isn't there? There's a trade-off because when Chris is doing that with Simon there, this stuff gets lost. Potentially, doesn't it? About being there, start position relating to the out of possession stuff. So all I'm highlighting and saying, look, there's times when you might do a bit of that, or encourage, we may say to the coaches, you might want to think about doing this in your practices because, go on. In your case, yeah. Yeah. So there's a lesser trade-off for you doing what you just did. If you're doing dealing with crosses, say, it'd have been different, wouldn't it? So it's the activity would sort of adjust the sort of trade-off. But it's just being mindful of that. So I wouldn't necessarily say you do that all the time, or that all the time. But it's just you can just now get some more goes at doing some catching, some dealing with it in the game rather than being separated from the practice. And when we've done this with the with the young guns. They like the, the attention, the TLC that they're getting. Okay? They like the bit of... T yeah. Yeah. Because one of the things was it comes back and says, well, in the games, they don't pass it to me. But it just gets booted up the pitch. Or is it passed up the pitch? But not by the goalie. Okay? So, <clears throat> so has that, has that been useful this morning? I know that we're going to go, you, obviously you're going to go for lunch or then, because I, I was going to say, if you're going to go, we're going to go for lunch, have a little think about what we just talked about. When we go back in the room after lunch or sandwich, we can, is there any questions? And if you feel that we can use some of that, then, you know, we can sort of, do you want some of the clips? Like we've got the session plans that we've, we've just used for today. Etc. But again, you can adapt it to suit your particular needs, and you can give some feedback and observations. 